Well, two months ago, uh, the elders of our church decided to comply with the state and federal government's request to no longer meet in person for church on Sunday mornings. And uh, special thanks to our amazing stream team. Uh, and th through their efforts, we were able to c continue streaming our live ser services as a stream-only format. And I just want to say a special thanks to our, our pastoral team, our staff, and to, uh, and to all of you watching for making this transition so smooth. I've heard from many, many of you uh, just about how much you felt supported during this time, and that is in no small part to the efforts, the amazing efforts of our, our team and our staff. And so thank you again to our staff. Uh, they really do love you all. It's been all done out of that spirit of love. And I've, I've personally seen them go the extra mile uh, to connect with you all. Uh, now our church, of course, is at a crossroads, and the question is before us. When do we reopen our church doors and begin meeting again in person, at least in some way, shape, or form. And, uh, in other words, and if we do that, what, what does it look like? So I want to make a few things clear right off the bat. Number one, it has actually never been illegal in, for churches in Pennsylvania to meet during this pandemic. Uh, religious organizations are considered a life-sustaining organization in Pennsylvania, and therefore we are on the exempt list, and just like Walmart and Target. And for that, I am grateful for the state of Pennsylvania and our government. Number two, you may be familiar with the red, yellow, and green zones for counties that are considered open or various stages of open. Uh, these color designations actually don't really affect churches, um, uh, unless, of course, we're in the green. Number three, we have closed our doors to honor the request of our government, but the government has also made it clear that they understand that churches will start meeting again. In fact, even if we reopen, we are actually given a lot of liberty as to how and what that would look like. Number four, we have been able to connect in creative ways. Uh, while we have been able to do that, there are certain foundational tenets of our Christian faith that we cannot do if we are not able to meet together physically. Uh, for instance, we cannot perform water baptisms if we're not meeting together physically. That's not just a suggestion that Jesus made. That was a command that Jesus said. Jesus commanded us to go and to baptize um, we, we can't take communion together, uh, another thing that Jesus asks us to do. Uh, we cannot lay hands on the sick and pray for them. The, and, and these aren't just suggestions in the scriptures. These are things that we are supposed to do. We cannot do these things over Zoom, unfortunately. I'm not suggesting, of course, that we'll be able to do all these things once we get, get back together physically, but there are steps that we can take towards doing those things. So over the past few weeks, I, uh, I took the liberty and reached out to a lot of our other local churches in our area, and uh, we wanted to bring about really a unified declaration of intent to reopen our doors, hopefully for many of us, on the same day. And so as of now, I've had some meetings this past week with a lot of our church, local church leaders, and, and both uh, myself and the elders have decided that we will be joining Morgantown Community Church, Twin Valley Bible Chapel, Brick Lane Community Church, Abundant Life Church, and others in opening our doors on June 7th. While this is the date that we are targeting for our soft opening, things can always change between now and then, just it depends on what the government says, numbers may change, but right now we are targeting June 7th uh, as, as the day we are gonna have our soft opening. Of course, things will look a little bit different. Just from a legal standpoint, uh, we must not exceed 50% occupancy in our church sanctuary, and we also can't exceed uh, 25% occupancy in our, our lobbies and hallways. So that, that creates a certain challenge for us, but that, that really is kind of the only legal precedent that we have to follow. And uh, so this means that we're going to be ha making some adjustments and some changes, and of course these won't be permanent changes, but just for the time being. So to, be, to start, what we're going to be doing is this. We're actually, because we have to maintain these occupancy rules, we're actually going to be starting with three services. We're going to be offering three services to start. Two of these services will be on Sunday mornings, and they will be at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock a.m. And now, while wearing masks are not a legal requirement for us, we, what we would like to do for the Sunday morning services is ask that you wear a mask when you enter the building, uh, and when you're in the hallway, and when you're kind of walking right past someone. But during the Sunday morning services, once you're in your seats, you are allowed to t remove your mask. Of course, you can keep your mask on if you want to, but you, once you're in, this, in, in your seats in the sanctuary, you can remove your mask. So really, the mask wearing would just be when you're moving through the building. On Thursday nights, we're going to be offering a third service. 
And uh, to be clear, it will be the Thursday before the Sunday. So our actual, technically, our first service uh, will be, I think it's June 4th. It's the, it's the Thursday before June 7th. It will technically be our first service where we open up our doors. Um, but, but the Thursday night service, to be clear, will be specifically tailored for those who are in the at-risk group or for those who are trying to be extra careful and cautious. So at our Thursday night services, mask wearing will be required at all times. The, the sermon that you hear on Thursday nights, though, again, will be the same sermon that you hear on Sunday mornings. Um, the, the worship might be a little bit different, but the, the sermon will be the same. We, we, won't, we will not be, though, however, uh, recording or live streaming the Thursday night services to help out our volunteers. Um, the, the Sunday morning services will continue to stream, but not the Thursday night services. Uh, and to make, as an effort to make this service on Thursday nights a little bit more secure, we are asking that families with children under the age of 14 not attend unless you have a child who is specifically in that at-risk demographic. Uh, for all three services, the people on the stage, like myself, anyone up here on the platform, will not be wearing masks because they will be more than 10 to 15 feet away from all of you. For all of our services, we will tape off every other row to help us keep a social distancing in place and we will be spreading out chairs a little bit more. We we'll ask that families or quarantine groups, they, they, they stay together in a row, they can sit right next to each other, but that there will also be about three chairs uh, in between different quarantine and uh, family groups. We will be providing extra cleaning of the surface areas, both during and between services. We'll also ask that there be, uh, uh, we're also deciding that the cafe, of course, will not be open just for now, and we will not be serving coffee or beverages during the service. Uh, we will not be having our meet and greet time just for now. We're sus suspending that, that time during our service as well. Um, we will also not be passing around the offering baskets during the service. We will just have stations in the back of the sanctuary where you can drop off your offering either before or after the service if you want to do that still in person. There will not be, at first, a separate children's program during our soft opening. Instead, the children's service will be following our adult, adult service, just like we're doing right now. It will be a slightly shortened version of that, about 15 minutes, and we just ask that parents, if, you, if your children want to stay for that with Pastor Kobe, that you just remain behind after the adult service ends and just sit with your children, uh, and we can spread out throughout the sanctuary there again. The nursery will be open for parents to take ch their children in there, but it will be unstaffed. We are asking, of course, that also if you, to help us out for cleaning purposes, that you just bring, if you're, bring your own toys if you feel like your children need toys. to. to we, don't want, we can't monitor what children are using which toys and which ones get cleaned. Um, when we reopen, there will be a few things we want to emphasize. Number one, we are asking that if you are sick, uh, even if you just have a little bit of a runny nose or a cold, just please stay home just out of courtesy and honor to those who are especially concerned about that. Uh, number two, we don't want anyone to feel pressured into coming back to church before they are comfortable. And that brings me to number three. We are still going to be continuing to live stream our services. So if you're not ready, that's great. Just continue to enjoy our live stream services at home. We will be releasing a, a guide video uh, sometime in the next few weeks, just telling you exactly what church will look like. We'll actually take you a little bit of a tour through that. So we'll be doing that about a week or so before we open up that, that first weekend. I also want to highlight uh, one thing we're excited about doing is on, on May 26th, uh, it's a Tuesday night. We're going to be having what we call an open-air worship night. It's an open-air worship night. We're actually going to be worshiping outside of our church building. So it's kind of a way to, for us to kind of break the ice, get back together. Uh, masks won't be required outside. You can wear them if you want to, but uh, we'll be outside of the open air, and we're hoping, if, as long as weather permitting, to have that wonderful time of worship together. So lastly, how can you help us? Since we'll be running three services, we're going to be needing some more volunteers. And so if you've already been volunteering as a greeter or usher, we'd love to have you, of course, come back and help us in that way. But we need more. Uh, we need help volunteers to help clean. We need volunteers to help us greet. And we will need volunteers to help us with security. So, and of course, uh, please pray for us as we continue to, to discern between now and then what this all will look like and how it's going to work together. And we welcome your thoughts and ideas. So thank you, everyone, for your patience. And we really, really, really can't wait to see all your smiling faces here uh, when we're all together again with a Thursday night or a Sunday morning. So God bless you all.